Hey Wargamers, today I want to talk about the changes made to Tau Forge World units in Chapter Proof 2018, and also uh, somebody I forgot in my other video are Pathfinders. So we're going to talk about all of that in today's video. Uh, before we do though, I want to say thanks for watching. If you like this video, go ahead and hit subscribe, that way you don't miss any of my upcoming Tau content. Okay, so uh, yeah, we talked about a lot of the changes to Chapter Proofed already, uh, basically going through the Codex changes and then the 8, but today I want to talk about Forge World. So there are some pretty significant changes. Some of them needed to happen, some of them we expected, but not all of them. So uh, let's go down the list here and talk about things as they come up. Blacklight marker drones are now 7 points. Uh, XV7 fire support hammerheads and XV7 heavy bombardment hammerheads are now both 100 points. That makes sense. That brings them in line with the codex. So I think that's totally legit. Um, XV9 hazard support teams are now 40 points each. And this is a pretty big change in terms of uh, their point efficiency. So if we look at uh, hazard suits with burst cannon, which is absolutely the best um, option for them. Uh, they compare very favorably to fire warriors and gun drones. Uh, you're getting um, quite a comparable amount of firepower, um, but you are getting it in a tactically very different platform. Uh, because it's a battle suit, you're able to use things like um, different you know, like command and control node, for example, you can use different stratagems on it. Um, and it, it can deep strike, which of course fire warriors can't do. They're more durable than gun drones themselves. Uh, so this gives you a lot more flexibility. And when we introduce the advanced targeting system uh, on top of that, we actually get um, very favorable point efficiencies uh, from hazard suits compared to those other options. So uh, hazard suits actually are not a bad choice if you're looking to take out droves of infantry. Infantry, especially if you're looking to do that in places that you wouldn't otherwise be able to reach. Of course, uh, you know, a gun line of fire warriors is going to be good, but you're essentially waiting for the opponent to come to you. Um, hazard suits are going to be nice at clearing out kind of that back line, uh, things that are camping objectives and distant corners of the board, things like that. So, uh, Hazard suits, I think, are a very strong choice moving forward, especially considering we're going to see more of a swing back towards an infantry heavy meta with the introduction of orcs and some of the, uh, you know, balancing out of knights. So, uh, hazard suits are looking good here. Um, mantas are now 2000 points. So, uh, I'm definitely going to bring one now, right? Um, uh, XV6, uh, Remora stealth drones are now 30 points each. Uh, especially if we're looking at something like comparing it to a hazard suit, there's just, there's no competition, right? Like Aramora is still too expensive to bring. Um, they're not durable enough. They're not going to be able to even hold objectives because they're flyers. So um, we're looking at Remora is still sitting on the shelf, unfortunately. Um, and then a big, uh, you know, a big, Thing that happened in chapter approved is that the supremacy armor, the Taunar, is now um, 750 points. This is a massive point drop. Um, it makes a big difference in terms of how many, um, you know, what else you can bring your army. You can actually build a list around a Taunar now instead of just being left with scraps, essentially. Um, so this is really good. Um, are you going to see lists that are Taunars and Fire Warriors and drones and that's it? No. Um, the reason for that is probably mostly meta-based. Um, I don't think that's going to be a very effective list overall just because you, all your points are invested in that one model. You're not going to be able to deal with infantry very well. You're not going to be able to capture objectives. And so um, having a Taunar-centric list is probably not going to be the way forward uh, even with these point drops. But these point drops do mean that you could do it if you wanted to, uh, which is you know, not the case before these point traps. So I think that's really good. All right. The last thing that I want to talk about are Pathfinders. And I I kind of breezed over them in my earlier video, but changes to rail rifle points make Pathfinders actually extremely point efficient. Um, we want uh, marker lights in our list in general. And so we've been looking at things like uh, fire sight marksmen or fire blade, <laughs> cadre fire blades um, as the source for those. But with this introduction, we actually see that uh, rail rifle pathfinders are one of the most efficient units in the game. They're more efficient than uh, crisis suits, they're more efficient than uh, broadsides, they're more efficient than riptides. Uh, they are very good at taking out a slew of opponents uh, for very cheap. And 
the issue here, of course, is their durability. Um, and so if you're going to be bringing them, you'll want to bring as many as you can, really, because they are going to die relatively quickly. But just having them uh, in your list actually gives you a lot of bang for your buck. So I think we're going to see more Pathfinders. I think we're going to see more Rail Rifle Pathfinders in particular. Um, this kind of reflects the change that we saw with Pathfinders going into Kill Team. Uh, Kill Team Pathfinders with Rail Rifles are fantastic. Uh, and now they're fantastic in 40k too. They're just uh, not very durable. So um, I think that's an issue. You might want to have some uh, gun drones around to do Saber Protocols for your Pathfinders actually instead of uh, relying on, on them just dying. Um, but of course, you can only bring three uh, Pathfinders per squad, and so you're going to have a couple Marker Lights in there too. That does lower their point efficiency offensively a little bit, but uh, remember, you still roll those Marker Lights first, uh, or one at a time even, so you can get those Marker Lights out and then use those Marker Lights to help improve your accuracy with uh, those Rail Rifles. So I think you know, having a few rail rifles in multiple units of Pathfinders is going to be a thing you see uh, more commonly moving forward. Uh, it meshes well with the meta and it does well against a diversity of opponents. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Are you going to be using rail rifles and hazard suits or uh, has none of this changed your mind at all? Uh, love to hear about it in the comments below. And of course, happy wargaming. Hey everyone, this video is made possible by my supporters over on Patreon. If you enjoyed this video, consider joining our community over there as well. Special thanks to No Excuses Panda, Scott Heater, Tao Oswell, Nick Steele, Jared Egler, Scott J. Smith, Stephen Cohen, Brian Mann, Jake Johnson, Eric Jackson, Benjamin, RP, Julian Peck, Andy M. Young, Peter Benjamin Parker, and Giovanni DiMaggio.